Hello, I'm Brent Donaldson, Senior Editor for Additive Manufacturing.media. Today we're talking about advanced software applications to help minimize build failure rates during the powder bed fusion metal additive manufacturing process. Joining me today is Ashley Eckhoff, a software programmer and now marketing manager for Siemens Manufacturing Engineering. So again, without further ado, Ashley, please introduce yourself and jump right into what you're explaining to us today. Great, thank you, Brent. Uh, my name is Ashley Eckhoff. So I've, I've been with Siemens for about 20 years and working with additive manufacturing for the past, gosh, I don't know, half a decade uh, in various different capacities. But today I'd like to talk about some software we have for first time write printing. One of the problems we see our customers deal with on a daily basis is uh, their need to get quality prints out of the additive manufacturing process. And it's especially important when it comes to metal parts. Uh, they print often sometimes five, eight, even 10 different versions of a part trying to get quality output uh, from their process. So we have several different tools uh, at Siemens that help with that process. And this software kind of runs the gamut from things that are really good for uh, people who are just starting out all the way up to uh, very detailed tools for experts. So this is the second tool in our tool set. Uh, hopefully you've seen a review of the, uh, the first tool uh, called Sonata. But we're going to go through uh, the second tool, which is uh, SimCenter Additive Manufacturing. And in this tool, what we do is we take a part and we divide it into kind of macro layers. So it's not as as uh, as defined as the print layers, but maybe uh, 100 of those together, 1,000 of those together, depending on you know what resolution you want to solve at. And the system looks for residual heat as the part is printed. And that also includes... Uh, not just the various different layers, but also all the residual powder and the way it handles heat around the part as it's printed in the build tray. So we start out with the parts uh, in the build tray. We've already built our support structures here. Uh, we're going to go through and set up some thermal and mechanical uh, settings for this part. So we're going to pick things like the material. We're going to pick the printer we want to print on. We're going to look at the various different uh, characteristics of that that we can add in. And all of those, of course, are inputs to the simulation system. As I said, it's going to go through and divide the part up into a number of different layers, and it's going to basically simulate the print process at each one of those various different layers through the part. And as it does that, it's going to be looking for residual thermal stresses and heats. Now it's going to apply an FEA mesh across the part. So you can see that here. Uh, so we've taken not just the part, but the support structures as well. And then it's going to also simulate, as I said before, the residual powder inside the build tray. So that's the big gray block you see there. And what you get out the back end is a map of the distortion. So you can have the distortion after the print while it's still in the build tray, or the distortion after it's been removed from the build tray. And each of these gives you a slightly different view about what's happening during the printing process. You can even see various different graphs for the different stresses that happen throughout the print process. And finally, at the end of this, you can generate a compensated model. And what the compensated model allows you to do is to take the knowledge of all those various different stresses and strains that were created from the thermal buildup during the heat, during the printing process, and to take that model and reuse it inside your build tray uh, so that the part will be compensated and all of those heat buildups won't cause the distortion that was initially, initially found during the simulation. Can you talk a little bit about how, um, how you guys are considering these uh, three separate tools um, to work together toward sort of the same goals? Can you explain that a little bit? Sure, yeah. So we at Siemens, we kind of view this this as a tool set, right? And you can kind of mix or match depending on where you're at in your additive journey. So uh, the initial tool that Brent talked about uh, is kind of a really good tool if you're getting started all the way through, maybe if you're an intermediate with additive. Um, if you've done some things where uh, you've had some trouble, you've, you've found some parts that didn't work very well, you had trouble getting them to work right in your print, uh, the tool he talked about is, is a great way to start out. It gives you a good starting orientation, and that solves something like probably 80% of the print problems we've seen. Um, and that's a, a great tool no matter where you're at in your additive manufacturing journey. Uh, the tool I just showed here is kind of an intermediate tool. 
So it takes that starting point uh, that we had there, the orientation, and maybe uh, for one reason or another, you can't use that orientation. Maybe you have to pack a bunch of parts in the tray and you can't quite use that orientation. Maybe you need some surfaces that have to have a specific finish so you can't put support structures on them, so forth. Whatever the reason happens to be, um, you can take those parts and put them into this system and have this system generate a compensated model to try and alleviate some of the distortion that may happen by not using an optimal orientation. Uh, we also have another tool that I'll be talking about here, uh, which takes things down to even the more granular level. And that tool is really for experts because what it does is it takes the, uh, the, the deposition path of the material. So at a very granular level, the way the material is actually being deposited within a layer, and we'll use that uh, information to try and compensate for distortion as well. And for now, um, we will wrap this up. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Be sure to check out additivemanufacturing.media for the article related to all of these Siemens advances in software to help minimize build failure rates. Thanks again.